Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers tenant authority, private property, and the fighting words doctrine, and is brought to us by Honest Citizens Channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. We all know that VPN services can help to protect your privacy and ensure that all of your identifying information is kept safe. But VPNs like Surfshark offer their users so much more than digital security. Online businesses know how affluent their customers are, what devices they use, and what they're willing to pay. That's why people from different countries see different prices for digital products and services. With Surfshark, you can avoid price discrimination for flights, car rentals, hotels, and more by hiding your location and identity online. A Surfshark subscription is totally unlimited, which means that you can use it on as many devices as you like, and even on all of them at once. No other VPN service offers that much accessibility. Right now, Surfshark is offering the ATA community an 83% discount with an additional three months completely free. With 24-hour customer service and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So click the link in the description to claim your exclusive offer now. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. On May 5th, 2020, Investigator Jefferson and Investigator Bailey of the Jonesboro Police Department in Arkansas were conducting surveillance on an apartment in the Breckenridge apartment complex. Shortly after parking at a vantage point across from the apartment they were watching, Trent Godazaro, a resident of the complex, confronted the officers. Hi. I don't know. You tell me. What's going on? Then can you move along, please? No, can you please move along? This is private property. I live here. I live, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm a, a tenant that gives me landlord uh, capabilities. Could you please exit my driveway? Then bring out a sergeant right now. Bring out a sergeant right now. Check this out, guys. I got some crazy people now. Thinking. Try to get some uh, badge numbers. And what is this about? Get your sergeant out here, man. You're on my property. Beyond discrimination and habitability, the rights granted to both landlords and tenants are generally controlled by the state and vary in their scope and form from location to location. Arkansas's tenant rights are some of the country's most archaic, and much of the legalities surrounding the relationship between tenants and landlords tend to favor the landlord. Lease agreements between landlords and tenants typically do not require the tenants to maintain the common areas of apartment complexes, such as the lobby or parking lot, and do not grant the tenant ownership of anything beyond their dwelling. We will discuss whether or not an apartment complex parking lot is public in a moment, but it is important to note that Mr. Gattazaro likely does not retain the authority to remove police officers or other members of the public from the apartment complex's parking lot. Only the owner of the property may trespass individuals from the premises. Sirs, I need your names and badge numbers. I'm going to have to report this. Nah, man, they on my driveway. I live here. I don't need no police around here. Listen to your sergeant. Your sergeant's going to tell you you can't stand here. You could go on the road over there, but you can't stand here. Go tell my girlfriend to call Miss Carla. They're doing it again. Call Miss Carla? Yeah, tell, tell Barbie to come out here. Call Miss Carla. They're on my property. They have no reason to be here. They need to leave. They could go on, they could go on the road where it's public, but this is my driveway. I live here. People live here. You don't have a right to be here. You need to go onto the road, sir. You need to go onto the road, sir. All right. After you get off the phone with Carla, call the non-emergency police department and explain to them that they need to send a sergeant out here so that these people can understand that you could be on public property, but you can't be on private property.
Although an apartment complex is private property, that does not necessarily mean that it is not open to the public. Many courts have addressed the notion of whether apartment complex parking lots are open to the public. But in the 2012 Idaho Court of Appeals case of State versus Martinez Gonzalez, the court compiled a meticulously thorough explanation of private property open to the public and drew upon the conclusions of over 10 different courts from all over the country. While examining whether driving under the influence of alcohol is illegal in an apartment complex parking lot, the court considered whether the parking lot is otherwise closed to the public by the presence of physical barriers, posted signs, limited access, or consequences for entry, and noted that the general public does not mean everyone is welcome on the property all of the time, but simply means an indefinite and undefined group of people may enter the property. The court noted that unless a property clearly excludes the public through the use of signage, gates, or some other measure of privacy, then it is likely considered open to the public. The court acknowledged that the consensus among the case law is that where an area is available to more than a markedly few number of individuals, it is considered open to the public, unless there is a very clear indication of an intent to keep the public out. The Idaho court concluded that, while it should be examined on a case-by-case -case basis, the parking areas of apartment complexes are generally considered open to the public, which would grant the Jonesboro officers the ability to enter the complex without the express permission of the property owner. It should also be noted that Arkansas Statute 16-81-108 may also grant the officers additional authority to enter the complex by stating that state and local police are authorized to enter upon the parking areas of private business establishments and to discover, investigate, and effect the arrest of persons thereon violating any state or local law to the same extent as if the person or persons were upon the public streets or highways. Considering that the officers were conducting surveillance while awaiting a search warrant, it is likely the Code 16 16-81-108 would grant them the authority to enter the apartment complex. But the language of the code is relatively vague in defining the phrase private business establishments, and a court would have to determine whether an apartment complex would be subject to the code. Nonetheless, without the property owner explicitly trespassing the officers from the parking lot, they are well within their authority to enter the complex, especially if they are attempting to effectuate an arrest on a suspect. And since you don't want to give your names and badge numbers, which is the policy, you're also going to be reprimanded. What's your badge number? They refuse to identify themselves. At this point, I don't believe them to be police officers because they have not identified themselves as police officers. Who are you and what are you doing on my property? Who are you and what are you doing on my property? So check this out, fellas. I ain't got to leave my porch for this, do I? I ain't even got to leave my front porch. Where are you doing on my property? Identify yourselves in the vehicle. What you doing on our property? We've contacted the landlord. The landlord does not ever agree with you being here. She lives in Truman. If she has to come here and trespass y'all, you're gonna be in some serious Come on, man, get him off the property. There's no reason for them to be here. They told me they have no reason to be here. Please tell them to leave. Yes, or at least go on the proper, uh, a proper place where it's the uh, public area. That's all we're asking. You're going to jail for disorderly conduct. For what? Put your hands behind your back. Mr. and one of his neighbors were both placed into handcuffs and taken to jail. The officers informed Mr. Gattazzaro that he was being arrested for cursing in public. It is well established that using vulgarities is protected under the First Amendment, particularly when voicing an opinion at or to a government official. In the 1942 Supreme Court case of Chaplinsky v. New Hampshire, the court narrowed the scope of the First Amendment's protection of free speech and established the doctrine of fighting words, and define them as words that, quote, by their very utterance, inflict injury or tend to incite an immediate breach of the peace. In the 1949 Supreme Court case of Terminello v. City of Chicago, the court further clarified that fighting words are words which produce a clear and present danger, but words which invite dispute and cause unrest are protected. In the 1989 case of Texas v. Johnson, the Supreme Court redefined the scope of the fighting words doctrine to mean words that are, quote, a direct personal insult or 
an invitation to exchange fisticuffs. In the case, the court held that the burning of a United States flag, which was considered symbolic speech, did not constitute fighting words. In 1992, the Supreme Court found that the, quote, First Amendment prevents government from punishing speech and expressive conduct because it disapproves of the ideas expressed, in the case of R.A.V. versus St. Paul. Even if the words are considered to be fighting words, the First Amendment will still protect the speech if the speech restriction is based on viewpoint discrimination. Subsection 3 of Arkansas's Disorderly Conduct Law, Code 5-71-207, states that a person commits the offense of disorderly conduct if, with the purpose to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, or recklessly creating a risk of public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, he or she, in a public place, uses abusive or obscene language, or makes an obscene gesture in a manner likely to provoke a violent or disorderly response. This code is structured around the fighting words doctrine, and simply cursing in public does not meet the standards set forth by the Supreme Court to justify an arrest. The Jonesboro officers are misrepresenting the authority of Code 5-71-207, and their arrest of Mr. Gattazzaro is likely invalid. Nevertheless, Mr. Gattazzaro and his neighbor were both arrested and officially charged with disorderly conduct, and Mr. Gattazzaro was additionally charged with resisting arrest. Following the arrest, Mr. Gattazzaro was released from jail after approximately six hours and claims to have suffered from pancreatitis as a result of the officers taking him to the ground. Mr. Gattazzaro's case is still ongoing, but he did tell me that he filed formal complaints against all of the officers involved and retreated retrieved the body camera footage and reports from his arrest. He also said that he wants to file a civil suit against the officers, but does not have the financial means to do so. Overall, the Jonesboro officers get an F for neglecting to employ any measure of de-escalation, displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of First Amendment rights, and arresting Mr. Gattazzaro and his neighbor for expressing their disdain for the officer's presence. If the investigators had simply informed Mr. Gattazzaro that they had a legitimate reason to be at the apartment complex and that he was interfering with an investigation, instead of rolling up their windows and ignoring him, then the interaction would likely have had a different outcome. The officers chose to effectuate an arrest based on a distortion of the law and the legal precedents surrounding that law and violate Mr. Gattazzaro's well-established right to criticize the actions of government officials. Whether or not it would have changed Mr. Gattazzaro's conduct, the officers could have at least made an attempt to engage in a productive conversation with him, rather than arresting him and reinforcing his negative perspective of law enforcement. This type of behavior only serves to deepen the divide between officers and citizens, and add fuel to the negative stereotypes associated with police. Mr. Gattazzaro gets a C for misinterpreting his authority over the apartment complex parking lot, assuming the officers were on private property without knowledge of the proper legal context, and engaging with the officers with a relatively hostile demeanor without knowing all of the facts associated with their presence. Although Mr. Gattazzaro was operating under several misconceptions about the law, he did retain the right to express his opinion of the officer's conduct, and he should not have been arrested for cursing in public. While I respect Mr. Gattazzaro's attempt to hold the police accountable, this interaction is a prime example of the importance of understanding the legal nuance associated with officer conduct before attempting to engage with them. The fact remains that the officers did have a legal right to enter the complex's parking lot, and the officers were in the midst of conducting surveillance, but that does not excuse their decision to arrest Mr. Gattazzaro. Just as officers have a duty to enforce the law as accurately as possible, so too do citizens have a duty to be informed about the law before attempting to hold officers accountable to it. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.